um, for the people that don't know me, I'm Steve McGee, the Secretary of the AEA. Uh, and I welcome all of our members from all over the state and you've come far and wide. We really appreciate people that have travelled early hours of this morning and obviously have to travel back tonight. Some have to go back to work on obviously a demanding night shift tonight. I um, want to thank Big Pole over the back there for assisting us. Thanks guys, it's really great. Yeah. community members in support, not only here today, but also on Facebook and all the support that we've had in other rallies. Uh, it's been fantastic and it will continue until this mob and this minister upstairs starts to listen to us, all right? I just want to go through a few details. Oh, the last ones that I want to thank is the Drums and Pipe Band over there. Yeah. And no doubt they'll have a few more tunes to play shortly. Uh, can we play a marching tune so we can march Davis out of his office? <laughs> um, look, as you'd be aware, um, these negotiations have been going on for 12 months now. Uh, we've had 32 meetings. For the last six months, this government has not made any further offers. Their last offer was 2.5% back in February. But for that 2.5%, they wanted you to give up some annual leave, some sick leave entitlements, and some allowances. And of course, we clearly told them what you thought about that in giving up those conditions for just 2.5%. With a capital F? With a capital F, that's right. <laughs> um, I think their reasons for sitting on their hands for the last six months is to try and frustrate you into taking harsher action, harsher industrial actions. And in doing that, they then would have tried to terminate your industrial bans to force us into you know, compulsory conciliation before Fair Work Australia and also then on to a compulsory arbitration where they would try and strip conditions away from, from paramedics in this state. Uh, and I think that was their agenda from day one. They, they, they weren't serious about trying to resolve this dispute because if they were, we would have had this resolved over 12 months ago. There's no question about it. Um, this health minister believes that you're just making up the issues that are in the paper and in the public's eye in regard to ramping up the hospitals. They think we're making up those stories. They think we're making up stories about poor response times. They think we're making up stories about adverse outcomes for patients. They think we're making up stories about people suffering, waiting for an ambulance when there is no ambulance coming. Um, he thinks that you have lied to the press and to the public about those stories. What he doesn't know is that every day there are many, many, many examples of that and I believe John Fain on, uh, on the ABC radio this morning went through a number of examples about the failure of the ambulance service to the Victorian community. And you are at the coalface who see that and now you're starting to get threatening bulletins, threatening letters to not pass on those details and to make those details public so the Victorian community know. Ambulance Victoria have put out bulletins, they've sent us threatening letters to try and shut you up, and clearly the government's agenda in getting us into a voluntary conciliation before Fair Work Commission by the end of this month was to gag you. Well, you're not going to be gagged, are you? No! And we'll continue to tell the stories that need to be told for the Victorian community's sake, won't we? Yes! That's good to hear. If you understand when this government came into office and remember think about this government when they were in opposition prior to the last election they were out there trying to get as much information against the government at the time the brumby government and they were calling them a failure in ambulance and health issues this minister said that he would rectify the problems since he's been in office ramping up times have gone from 7,000 hours per month on average to 13,000 hours per month that equates to about 18 ambulances off the road every minute of the day, every day of the year. And you wonder why we've got problems in getting ambulances to patients. Response times are blown out by 22% across the state. So they're 22% worse than what they were when he came into office. Is he trying to fix it? No, he's not. All he's trying to do is to shut you up and to criticise you. And in fact, last week, David Davis made a statement down in Gippsland to a story in Gippsland where there was a cardiac arrest of a patient. And he said an 18-minute response time was acceptable for cardiac arrest. He doesn't even know... He doesn't even know that he's got a government benchmark of 15 minutes, but 18 minutes is acceptable. That's how well off the mark he is. I think he's a minister out of touch, and I actually think we should be calling for today a vote of no confidence in this minister to leave his office. So I want to see a show of hands of a vote of no confidence in David Davis. Thanks for that. I think it was fairly overwhelming, wasn't it? So I don't think anyone voted in favour of him staying in office. Um, so look, again, Thank you for coming out today. This battle will continue. We're
we're not going to go away until we get a fair and proper outcome for paramedics in this state and until we start to improve the crisis within the ambulance service. So they're, they're both linked. Good wages, good conditions keeps paramedics in Victoria, which will keep ambulances on the road. And we expect this minister to get off his hands and the Premier to get off his hands and get this dispute resolved as soon as possible. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Dave Davis, go away! Paramedics here to stay! Dave Davis, go away!